Okay, this uh, this is my friend Mike Peters here. Mike and I have been playing guitar together a lot over the past year. And uh, I, I've been going around and uh, interviewing, talking with people, uh, and collecting their stories and writing songs about their stories. So uh, I was just out a couple of months ago to see uh, uh, a lovely lady out at the uh, Gillis Lodge in Belfast, and her name is Hattie Hughes. And uh, I think, uh, and tomorrow I think I'm going to Hattie's 85th birthday party at Gillis Lodge tomorrow. So um, I, she, her daughter phoned and invited me. I was like, of course, we'll be going out to Hattie's 85th birthday. So when I was talking with Hattie Hughes, uh, she told me a story about uh, from when she was a child. Now, remember, Hattie's 85 now, right? So, so she told me a story about uh, when she was three years old, her mother died suddenly just from you know, an illness, and uh, she was left with her three brothers and her father. And uh, apparently dad, her father was a good, good man, and he looked after the kids, and you know, made sure they had a roof over their head and had food, and, and he really loved his children, so. Uh, but at the time, there were uh, some people from family services who thought it wasn't appropriate for a, a single man to be raising these, you know, these three or four children. So, uh, they were planning to come and take the kids and uh, have them adopted out, uh, probably off the island, so. So uh, Hattie's father told them, you know, that the, uh, these folks are coming and they want to take you kids and have you adopted. You probably end up down in Boston somewhere, and we'll never see you again. You'll, uh, you know, you'll not ever get back to PEI, and you won't see your brothers and sisters or anyone ever again. So uh, Hattie told me this story as she's telling me, and then she said her father told the kids that if they didn't want to be taken by family services that they better go hide in the cornfield. So the kids went, did that. They went and hid in the cornfield and uh, family services never did manage to take them away from, from their family. So Hattie told me this story and I didn't write anything down because I just met her and I thought it would be rude to be like taping her or something like that. So anyways, I got home and went, oh, I have to remember everything she said. So, uh, so this is a song. I, I took it out, I was out a couple of, I guess about a month ago, played this for Hattie, and I went through every line of the song with her to make sure she approved of every line. And she said it was wonderful, and then I asked her what I should call it. And uh, she, uh, she asked me to call the song Hattie's Prayer. So this is, a, this is for Hattie Hughes. Mother went to heaven, she was all three. Didn't know what would become of the other kids and me. Father was a good man, worked hard every day. Cared for all his children, and every night we'd pray. Thankful for food and clothing, new for our heads. So we paid attention. When our father said, You best go hide in the cornfield if you want to stay with me. You best go hide in the cornfield until those people leave. You best go hide in the cornfield if you want to stay with me. You best go hide in the cornfield until those people leave. Well, Sister Mary Henry, coming here today to take all your children for adoption far away. We knew our daddy loved us, he was always kind. We knew that he was worried about what these folks had in mind. We know they never managed to take us away. Now I'm in my 80s, can still hear my father say, 
Just go hide in the cornfield You wanna stay with me Just go hide in the cornfield Until those people leave Just go hide in the cornfield You wanna stay with me Just go hide in the cornfield Until those people leave That's prayer for that And just a short while ago, well, started the afternoon here, Stella Shepard here was telling you about Darkies Hollow, so. So, it's uh, quite a story. And I, actually, in, in listening to, to uh, Stella's story, a friend of mine, he said, oh, back in the, uh, when, they, when slavery was still in existence here on the island, he said, uh, well, there were, he said, oh, the black people really had it bad, he said, but then there were some other people who had it even worse than them, and I was like, oh, really? He said, oh, yeah, the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so we thought we'd take this song. Uh, I had a chance to play this uh, uh, about two months ago on Vancouver Island in Victoria. I was out there for a, an arts conference and uh, got to play this song, and uh, it was really cool at, the, at the, the concert. We had done a workshop earlier in the day and about 25 or 30 people had learned the words. And uh, so when we played that night at the concert, all of a sudden out of the audience there were like 30 extra voices coming out. It was really quite nice. So this is, uh, this is called Darkies Hollow. We thought we'd take something that sort of had a bad connotation and try and turn it into something that was, that was good. So here we go. Cardigan to Charlottetown Find yourself out After the sun goes down There's a place that You can go Darkest hollow on the Seven mile road Darkest hollow on the Seven mile road Darkest hollow on the Seven mile road Well, Tattis and Mary were the finest folk. You could have a drink, tell a good joke. I want a place to rest your bones. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Times were hard, they made it through. Here we are tonight. The colors been washed out of me, but the history lives inside. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the seven The foolish pension, the music will make you want to sell your soul. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. They would play the fiddle and the wine guitar. For the people who were traveling by 
The black shepherds as they were known Darkest hollow on the seven mile road Darkest hollow on the seven mile road Darkest hollow on the seven mile road You could jig for your dinner now. Heard it mentioned, Uncle Willie got the foolish pension. Music will make you want to sell your soul. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the seven mile road. Darkest hollow on the I love that, Stella told me. I, I just love the line, Uncle Willie got the foolish pension. <laughs> I was like, what did you say? I was writing that down. Well, this next tune is a, a song, another story from PEI's history. I've got a, I recorded an album of about, I, did we do, oh, I think about 10 songs, uh, an album called The Old Stock a couple of years ago. And so I've just been collecting more and writing more songs, so um, I'm going to record an album once I feel like it's time to lose more money, I'll record another album. <laughs> so uh, there was a boxer here in PEI, and uh, his name was George Godfrey. He uh, moved down to the States, he was down in Boston, he opened up a gym, and uh, he taught lots of people to box down there, and he himself was quite a renowned boxer. Uh, he was good enough that he wanted to fight the great John L. Sullivan, who was the white bare-knuckle boxing champion of the world then. And John L. Sullivan was a, if you ever see a picture of him, he was a big brute of a man. And you, I wouldn't want him hitting me. But, and uh, so, uh, uh, back then there were race laws. The white league weren't allowed to fight with the black fighters. But uh, Godfrey had earned the right to fight Sullivan. So they set up a fight, and uh, I think Sullivan's team probably had the fight shut down because the police came and shut it down before they even got in the ring. But that was to save John Sullivan's good name because people were saying he was scared to fight old chocolate, as they were calling George Godfrey then in his later years. And uh, I think uh, Godfrey wanted nothing more than to knock the stuff out of that guy. Right? So, <laughs> so this is a song. It's called Old Chocolate, the song. Godfrey was his name. He was big and strong as a man could come, a world class champion, a world class champion. He ran a gym in Boston, fought many a man. It was a wondrous thing, the power in his hands, the power in his hands. Knuckles hard as steel. Through the ranks to the great John Sullivan. The great John Sullivan. Big John was the best boxer in the world in his day. He refused to fight with 
Chocolate was scared of him, was scared of him. George Godfrey was his name. He was big and strong as a man to become a world class champion. A world class champion. Back then it was forbidden to, to cross racial lines. Holy shut him down for the first round to save John Sullivan's name. To save John Sullivan's name. George Godfrey was his name. He was pretty strong as a man could come. A world class champion. A world class champion. song here, and uh, I wrote this song quite a few years ago and just started uh, working it out again in a different key because I can't sing that high anymore, so, <laughs> so I had to lower the key. And this is sort of a song about children, and uh, I wrote this song about a little girl that was in a treatment center. I used to work uh, in a treatment center for the Salvation Army in Calgary for a bunch of years, and there was a little girl, she was just a beautiful little girl. She was in the, in the center, so I wrote this song about her, and then I was out in Calgary playing gigs a couple of years ago, and I walked into this bar in the middle of a Saturday afternoon to start our set, and there she was, sitting in the bar. So uh, I went up and told her I had written a song about her and I wanted to play it for her. Well, the, the whole place went quiet. You could hear a pin drop, and uh, she just sat there and cried, which was the response I was looking for. I guess. <laughs> so, and this is a song for children. It's called Little. Hey, little one, let's 
up in the morning. You got another day's dawn. Be thankful that you're young and strong. Your heart will surely guide you. Standing tall, we need to keep on keeping. 